Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. In this one, I'm going to be talking about a few things to keep in mind when starting a fresh level 1 character. The early stages of the game can be tough, and you don't have access to many things that make your life easier. But if you just keep your head down and grind it out, it goes by fast and you'll start unlocking plenty of new things to try out. These are fairly general tips, and I'm hesitant to get too specific because there's a potential for a lot of things to change with the upcoming 0.12 patch. I'll be covering the early game changes in that patch when it gets here, but for now, let's get into 5 tips for starting from a fresh level 1 character. Currently, leveling traders and unlocking new items through completing quests is the main way to expand your access to items, and when you're starting fresh, getting your reputation up with the traders is one of the most important tasks you have at hand. The flea market gives you access to essentially any item in the game as long as someone is selling it, but you're almost always going to be buying on the market at a pretty significant markup. Depending on how much money you have, that might not be a problem, but for most players, it's not sustainable to pay jacked up prices for everything they need. Trader levels have three requirements, player level, reputation, and money spent, and all three have to be reached to level a trader up. Reputation is earned by completing quests given to you by the traders, and money spent is increased both by spending at a trader and selling items to them. Real quick, I'll break down what you should be selling to each trader to get the best return. Skier buys weapon attachments, armor, and clothing at the highest price. Therapist buys meds, food, and any sort of rare items or trinkets for the highest price. Mechanic and Peacekeeper will give you the most money for weapons and ammo. Ragman buys armor, clothing, and cases at a pretty decent price. And Propor will buy weapons, armor, and grenades from you at a fairly decent price. In my opinion, Ragman, Skier, Peacekeeper, and Mechanic are the most important traders, with Ragman being almost necessary for you to be able to access armor, backpacks, tack rigs, and helmets. Skier, Mechanic, and Peacekeeper sell a vast majority of the weapons and attachments in the game, so I make their quests a big focus as soon as possible because I want to be able to build effective weapons as soon as I can. Peacekeeper's quests won't be available in the early game, but you do need to get Skier's questline done to a certain point to be able to access them later. Therapist controls access to meds, certain containers, lab cards, and one of the keys to the Kiba store. She is pretty important to level, but in my experience you can often scavenge for meds and build up a pretty nice stockpile. I make her quests a focus only when I'm nearing a PMC level required for her next trader rank. Propor is one of the first traders you can get quests from, and leveling him up gets you access to Russian weapons, high tier ammo for those weapons, and a majority of the grenades in the game. He also gives out some of the end game quest lines, and they have some pretty good rewards, but his quests can be a real grind sometimes. Because you will be doing quests from Propor right from the start, most players will naturally meet his reputation goals while leveling up, so you don't really need to focus his quests too much unless you just blow them off in the early game. It's definitely a tough task to get through the early game quest grind, but if you use the Tarkov wiki as a guide and focus on selling loot to traders, you'll have them leveled up soon enough. Scav raids are great in the early game because they give you a cost-free raid and sometimes you can get some awesome loot to bring home for your PMC. However, in my opinion, it's best not to overdo your scav runs, because while you might be making some good cash, you're really cutting down on your experience gains for your main character. For example, if you're running a scav raid in between every PMC raid, which is very possible because the timer is only minutes, and I've done it in the past, you're legitimately cutting your potential experience gains in half, because 50% of your playtime is not making progress on your main character. Aside from missing out on some potential level gains, you're also also slowing your progress on really important soft skills like endurance and perception because half of that progress is on your scav. Don't take this as me saying you should not do scav raids because they're helpful for many things, but try and put as much time on your main character as possible in the early stages so you can get that level 1 to 15 grind done and dusted as quick as possible. Personally, I like to use my scav runs as warm-up games when I start playing and as sort of a breather after a death that might have gotten 
gotten me a little salty. Scav runs can also be really great to get a free loadout and to farm items that you need for quests. Scav runs can definitely help you get ahead and increase your bankroll, but just keep in mind the more time you spend as a scav, the farther behind your PMC is getting and the longer that early game level grind is going to take. Most maps have some way to make a nice profit, but in my opinion, the number one map to make money when you're low level and don't have keys is Interchange. Within the many, many hallways, stores, and parking lots of this abandoned shopping mall at the heart of Tarkov is more weapon crates and loot spawns than any one PMC could ever hope to fully loot in one raid. On top of this, there's almost always a pretty big crew of scavs trolling around just waiting for you to drop them and grab their stuff to use in the next raid. Shoreline might be able to get you more profit in a single raid, but you need a whole key bar full of expensive keys, which you aren't going to have at a low level. In the labs, you can basically make infinite money, but it's also the most dangerous and intense map in the game, which makes it kind of inconsistent. Factory, customs, and woods, you basically need to get god rolls on your loot crates or win PvP fights to make a good profit, so they're really inconsistent as money makers. But when you're playing Interchange, all you have to do is cruise around the mall, stay frosty, and keep a good mental note of where the loot is. Over the course of a few raids where you can open more than 20 weapon cases, you're bound to make some good money. So it's a perfect map to try and increase your bankroll without needing a ton of keys. Certain items that increase your storage space are almost invaluable because of the convenience they offer or because they're basically necessary to carry essential items into the raid. In my opinion, the most important things you're going to want to grab right away are a Lucky Scav junk box and either a documents case or a key bar. The Lucky Scav junk box is sold by Therapist Level 2 for about 900,000 rubles. It's a bit of a steep investment, but it provides you almost 200 extra spaces of storage, which you're definitely going to need when you're hoarding quest items and barter loot to make good purchases later in the game. The documents case and key bar essentially both serve the same purpose. They allow you to bring in all of your important keys while keeping them organized and safe in your secure container. The documents case has the benefit of holding money, key cards, and other items as well, but it also takes up two spaces in your container. Most players should have access to a key bar as a starting gift, which can be redeemed on the Escape from Tarkov website in your profile, but they can also be bought on the market or from Therapist Level 3 for 15 H2O2, 12 NACL, and 18 ibuprofen. The documents case can be purchased from Therapist Level 2 for one cat statue, one lion statue, and five horse statues. Personally, I prefer the key bar most of the time because it only takes up one spot, but it's really personal preference if you'd rather bring a docs case for the utility. None of these items are technically essential, as in you need them to make progress or complete raids, but the earlier you can get a hold of them, the more you can use them to your advantage, and the convenience benefits of the extra storage are well worth the price. Arguably the most important part of your loadout in Escape from Tarkov is the ammo you bring into the raid with you. Because of that, players with better access to armor piercing or AP ammo generally are going to have an advantage over players that don't. When you're playing at a low level and don't have the option to buy decent ammo at a reasonable price, picking up every round of halfway decent ammunition you can get your hands on is super important. Thankfully, Decent ammo is actually a fairly common drop as static spawns out there in the raid. You can find cardboard boxes with between 30 and 120 rounds of 5.45 BP and BT rounds all over the place. And you can even find BS or 7N39 rounds, which are the top tier in that category, in those same boxes. Every AKS-74U found in weapon crates also has 30 rounds of BP ammo, so I try and scavenge those a lot in the early game. Ammo for the western weapons, like the M4 or the M1A, is harder to find, but in the early levels you are likely not going to have much access to them anyways, and you'll be using AKs, so keep your eyes open for boxes of decent ammo and use it to your advantage as much as you can. Whether you find it sitting around, or you take it out of the cold, dead hands of your enemies, treat every round of good ammo like it's gold when you're at a low level, because it's going to help you get through some pretty tough situations.
I hope these tips can help some of you get through that early game grind. It's definitely a challenge, but once you get past it and get your traders leveled up, the game really opens up and there are tons more possibilities for things to do and items to use. There's definitely room for more tips to get through this part of the game, and with the 0.12 patch getting ever closer, it's something I'm looking to focus a bit more on. I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jdogthewise, and it would be great to have some more people drop by, so I'll leave a link for that in the description. As always, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below, and until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.